Namaste. So we just released another composition. <laughs> and uh, this one's called Lavender Tears. So this is the analysis and also the explanation, the story of how this piece came to be, how it was composed and so on. This was pure inspiration from the goddess. The way it happened was I was looking into uh, doing a raga based piece and I had got a new plugin that allows me to simulate Indian instruments. And so I was playing around with this and came up with this scale that is used in this composition. Let me play it for you. So this is a raga scale. I'm not sure what raga it is, actually. I looked it up on the internet, but I couldn't find any uh, well-known, anyway, raga that fits this scale. So I have been listening to a lot of Drupad. Drupad is an ancient style. It's at least 5,000 years old. It goes back to King Drupada. King Drupada, the father of Draupadi, who was the wife of the five Pandavas. So it's at least 5,000, maybe more years old. So this ancient style is very captivating and beautiful, very devotional also. And I uh, used this style and I was investigating this particular scale. And I happened to notice that if you take this scale and then use it to generate a set of chords, scale tone chords, you come up with this. So I was playing around with these scale tone chords, which are very beautiful, but unusual from a Western harmony point of view. But, you know, who cares about Western harmony? <laughs> so just on a hunch, I said, well, what if I try putting these chords instead of in a scalar form, what if I put them in a circle of fourths Bum, 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 you know, a very common movement of harmony and uh, chord roots. So I did, and it sounds like this. So as I was listening to this progression, which is very sweet, huh? all of a sudden I got inspired. Huh? The goddess hit me with uh, a beautiful melody. I just played it spontaneously on the keyboard. 
It just came to me. It was one of those moments of inspiration where I could have improvised on that chord progression for hours and never repeated myself. You know, I've only had a few moments like this in my whole life. And it was where I like saw through the chords into the raga itself and the meaning of the raga. And this was all given as a revelation by a goddess. So I decided to, uh, well, first of all, let's listen to the melody. It's the same melody as we open the video with. This melody is so beautiful, it put me into ecstasy. And I was in ecstasy for like 10 days while writing this piece. Sometimes it was so intense. A mother goddess was in my heart radiating all this incredible love, ecstasy, and energy. And at times it was so intense, I almost couldn't bear it. Uh, I would be writing music and just break down in tears. See, this is... <laughs> This is why I said, I am not the author of this piece. Uh, this piece came as inspiration from the goddess. Because, first of all, I dedicated it to her, goddess Kamakshi. Kamakshi means beautiful eyes. And then I also, I wanted to express her mercy, her compassion, specifically. So in the first section, this is a raga, a deep night raga. And the way you know it's a night raga is that it begins from the, the middle sa and descends to the low sa. And also there's no fifth, no pa. Pa represents the sun. So in night ragas, especially the late, late night, early, early morning, type of raga, there's no pa. And also it's descending instead of ascending. So what is the meaning of this? Well, did you ever wake up at like three o'clock in the morning and it seems like the whole uh, problems of the whole world are on your shoulders? <laughs> and you wonder how is everything going to work out? How is it going to resolve? How am I going to keep on? How am I going to continue? Well, I know a lot of people are feeling like this these days. So I prayed for the goddess's compassion and she delivered. <laughs> so this raga is a raga of compassion and especially the komal dha and uh, komal uh, ri. They show compassion and devotion, respectively, while the komalni expresses compassion or desire for others. Huh? Let me desire the benefit of others, not for me. So this is mother's mood. She's the mother of all creatures. Oh, and also the uh, shudaga. Shudaga expresses friendship, affection. And of course, Ma, uh, Shuduk Ma, represents motherhood. So these all 
different tones go together to express a mood of intense compassion in the deep of the night. So this is the meaning of the raga. And then comes the prayer. So I got together some uh, names from the Lalita Sahasranam. And then I put them together into a short vocal. You have to excuse my voice, huh? Because I've been off singing regularly for like 10 years. <laughs> so I'm having to practice everyday vocal exercises. So it begins, Aum, Ama Kamakshi. Ama means mother. Kamakshi means she who has beautiful eyes. Her eyes are so fascinating huh? that once you see them, you can never forget them. You can never take your attention away from them. Arunang Karuna. Tarangita Kshin. Arunang means like the rising sun at dawn. And Karuna, of course, is compassion. Tarangita Kshin means waves of compassion emanating continuously from her eyes. So this <laughs> so ecstatic. Then the next line. Sarvaruna Karuna Kachidaruna. Sarvam Aruna means everything associated with her is red. And this has been highlighted in various namas in the Lalita Sahasranama and also in some prayers. Like, for example, Saundarya Lahari 93 says, Karuna Kachidaruna. Her compassion, which is red in color, is beyond comprehension. Uh, why does she care about us? Who are we? We're so insignificant. Yet, she resides in a heart, and when we pray to her, she responds. So this is the great mystery. How is it that she can be so compassionate, even though she's the creator and destroyer of the universe? Huh? How is it that even though our tiny egos are illusory and so on, she cares about us? And then Kamakshi Sandra Karuna. She's like the ocean of compassion. Huh? She's unlimited. Her compassion has no bounds, no end to it. So, of course, most people are thinking that they are the doers and they're going through life taking credit for all their actions, when actually everything is done by her. Uh, so as soon as we give up this illusion of egotism, she responds very strongly from within the heart. So, okay, that's the prayer part. Then, I wanted to show the time before dawn uh, because her compassion is rising like the sun, right? So I wanted to show the twittering of the birds and the gradually lightening sky in the east and all leading up to the sunrise. Well, I borrowed an image from Ferde Grofet of the composer of the Grand Canyon Suite, where he, he used a progression of scale tone chords. Huh? Remember the scale tone chords we played back in the beginning. But of course, we're not using a regular Western major scale. We're using a raga scale that has very different chords. So it comes out a much more interesting kind of progression. So I added some chirping birds and these chords building up to the heart melody, what I call the heart melody, which is the melody that Ma inspired in me in the very beginning of writing the piece. So in other words, everything that I composed or everything that I wrote was simply leading up to this beautiful melody, like, how can I explain? 
It's like if you have a beautiful gem, a diamond or something like that, you want to put it in a setting that reveals its beauty. You don't want to just put it in some trashy piece of junk jewelry. You want to put it in something really nice, right? So by making this setting leading up to the heart melody, it becomes even sweeter and more attractive. And one, one of my friends, Greg, wrote me, he said, you don't want the piece to end. It's so beautiful. And I have the same feeling. In fact, this was a big problem for me, how to end this piece. <laughs> how to end it. So I, did, I went through different alternatives, you know. Maybe I should bring out the brass and make a big fanfare and all like that to, uh, you know, to simulate the rising sun. But then I thought, no, wait a minute. This is about compassion, not bravado. So I figured to end it, to end it on a sweet, soft chord, one of the chords, which is the tonal center. If you analyze the scale tone chords as a scale, the tonal center is actually F. So in Raghu uh, theory, this is called Magama. Magama means that the actual tonal center is different from where the Sa and the drone are at. So it fit very well with the nature of the rag to end on the fourth chord, which happens to be, uh, if you use the scale tones directly, a, a minor large ninth chord. Minor large means that it has a minor third, but a major seventh. And then I put the ninth on top of it, just for a little extra added sweetness. <laughs> And then it ends tenderly, but firmly. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.